Hi, my name is Seti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can dive onto Google Sites and create a hover effect just like this. So let's jump into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now the first thing you'll need is two images. One image that is your neutral image and then a second image that is the same dimensions but that will only show up when you hover over this image. Now this is not natively supported within Google Sites so we're going to have to use a little trick using HTML and CSS. Now the first thing is creating those images. Now if you haven't got any images that are already hosted on the internet you can easily create your own in Google Drawings. Now that's exactly what I've done right here. Now I've jumped into Google Drawings, now I set my page settings to a custom dimension and I've selected 160 by 160 pixels. Now I've created two images that are exactly the same just different colors in order for me to save a bit of time. Now the images that I've created are this image and that image right there. Now I'm going to now take these two images, download them as a JPEG file and upload them into my Google Drive. Now once they're there, nobody can see them because it's still private. So the first step is to make these images public. So let's right click on our images and select share. Now once you've done that, we're going to set the image to be public URL viewable by anyone with the link. So this means that anyone who has this link gets access to these images. Now hold on, we're not done because this is now a public image, but it's still not a hosted image, which means that we can't reference it in code. Now in order for us to do that, we are going to have to copy both of these images, their file ID. Now we can find the ID of a file in their shared URL. So let's just quickly click on that little link icon and that gives us the public URL. We're going to paste it in, let's say a text editor or a docs, and then we're going to look for that file ID. Now you can see here, I've got the file ID highlighted and this is the part of the URL that we are going to keep. The rest, we can delete that. So this is my first file and I'm going to do the same for that second image. Now the second image, again, I take that public URL I'm going to look for that file ID and then I keep the file ID intact. Now this is the second step. Now in order for us to turn these into hosted images, scroll down into the description of this video and you will find a special URL. We're going to copy that URL and then paste it in front of our ID. Once it's pasted, you will see that it says your ID here, you can delete that snippet and obviously leave the new ID intact. We're going to do the same for the second file. And again, you can find this URL in the description below. Now, once you've got these two links, you have hosted URLs that you can use to reference in code. This is the most tricky bit. Now, in terms of HTML and CSS, we're going to use a card code. This is a special element within CSS that we can use in order to create this hover effect. Now, if you're not too familiar with HTML and CSS, you will find the full code in the description below. Now, make sure you leave a comment and let me know what you like about this and what other little tricks would you like me to play around with in CSS. Now, once you've left your comment, scroll back up and make sure to hit that subscribe on your way up. Now, I've got my HTML code here and important to note is that CSS can be put within a single snippet. However, it has to be inside your style tags. Now the style tags go in the head and we're going to place them right here underneath our title. Now you can see I open my style and at the bottom I close my style and inside my style I'm going to put that card element. Now the way you do that is by simply typing dot or full stop card and then open those curly brackets. Now we can define what that card looks like. So I'm going to give it a height and a width and this has to be the exact same height and width as my image. Now this is the same height and width as my image. Now my image was 160 pixels by 160 pixels and so my card will also be 160 by 160. I'm going to put that right there and then the way that you're going to make this reference that image is by adding a background. Now the image will become your card's background. So let's type in background colon URL and then we open up our brackets. Now here we're going to place that URL we've created earlier. Now this is the hosted image URL. Now remember the first one that we're putting here, this is your standard image without that hover effect. So go ahead and place that URL there. Make sure you don't forget those speech marks because otherwise this will not work. We're going to close our brackets, no repeat, 
and then we're going to close the curly brackets. Now, time to create our hover effect. We're going to type the same thing, dot card, but this time we're going to add colon hover. Now this is going to create that hover effect and it's basically signaling to the code, okay, whenever you see someone hover over this card, change the properties. So we're going to set the same dimensions and then again put background and that URL. However, we're not putting the same URL, we're now going to put that second files URL. And this is all you have to do, change that URL and you're good to go. Once you finish that, you can again close everything down with those curly brackets, close your style tag, close the head tag, and now find your body. Now this is the HTML body and we're going to keep this all in one clean snippet of code because inside our HTML body, we're now going to have to call this element because at the moment we're not seeing it. It's only been defined and so the code knows what the element will look like, but we're not asking for the body to show us that element. So what we're going to type now is we're going to open up a div tag. So in your body, you're now going to copy this little bit of code, which is your div where you're calling a certain class and the class we're calling is our card. And we're going to call that and then close our div tag. Once everything is done, you can copy the entire snippet of code, make sure that you have everything, including the HTML tags, and then we're going to go to our Google Sites. Double click anywhere on the page, select embed and then embed code. Now, once you've done this, everything is good to go. The only thing left for you to do is to resize that embed element because the way Google Sites works is that it's going to work similar to an iframe and you have to manually resize it. This is very important to note because you have to go into your preview and make sure it works on desktop, tablet, and also on mobile. It is possible that on mobile things get cut off so make sure that you resize it accordingly. However, even with these limitations, it's a great little trick to try out on your Google Sites and many people will ask you how you did it. Now you can tell them, you can reference this video, you can share them the link, or you can give them all the HTML code in that description below and they will be able to create their very own cards. Now scroll down to that comment section below, let me know how you've used this on your Google Sites. Did you find this helpful? Not, what would you like to see in future videos? Make sure you hit subscribe and that notification bell to be notified of new videos. This was another flipped classroom tutorial. My name is Seti and I thank you for watching.